In this presentation, we'll look at feedback control in a bit more detail. And we'll do this through an example. Our example is the positioning of the read head of a hard disk drive. The read head is the part that reads the information on the disk drive. The head is attached to an arm, which is driven by a voice coil actuator. This actuator causes the arm to rotate and moves the head across the surface of the disc. The heads can move from track to track in under 10 milliseconds. The reed head consists of two parts. One part actually has the sensor, which measures the magnetic field on the disc. The other part is a mechanical part called the slider. The slider's purpose is to establish an air cushion between the head and the disc so that the head can ride very close to the disc. In fact, the head rides only 15 nanometers above the surface of the disc. They read information that is contained on tracks on the disc, and these tracks are only about 30 micro inches apart and the individual bits of information on each track are separated only by a few micro inches. This is an excellent application of feedback control because it requires very accurate motion of the head at very high speeds. This would be virtually impossible to do with open loop control. The development of the control system for positioning the disk drive head is a key technology in the development of disk drives, one that strongly influences the performance of disk drives and the fate of disk drive companies. Let's now go through the feedback control loop for positioning the disk drive read head. We'll start with the desired head position, which is a signal which is sent from the computer to the disk drive controller. The desired head position is compared to a position measurement which comes from the read head itself. The difference between the desired head position and the position of the read head is the error. The error signal is what the control electronics act upon to produce a voltage and this voltage goes to the voice coil resulting in a torque on the arm causing the arm to rotate and to move the read head. Encoded along with the data on the disk is the track information. So the read head can not only read the data but also know what track it's at. Let's now look at this feedback loop in terms of signals and block diagrams. So we have the desired position signal which is labeled R of S and it's compared to the head position Y of S to yield the error signal E of S. E of S then goes into our controller block and that's labeled KA to produce the output voltage V of S. So V of S is equal to KA times E of S or V of T is KA times E of T. This is known as proportional control because the output voltage V of T is just proportional to the input error EFT. The voltage then goes into the plant. The plant here is the voice coil actuator, the arm, and the read head. So the output is the read head position Y of S, which is equal to G of S times V of S in the frequency domain. The output signal is then fed back to the comparator so that it's compared with R to make E of S. The transfer function in this feedback loop is given by 1. Sometimes when you see feedback loops, this block will not be represented and you'll see the output go all the way back to the comparator without any block in this signal line. The transfer function G of S is given below. It is Km over S times quantity Js plus B times quantity Ls plus R. The terms S and Js plus B in the denominator of the transfer function are associated with the mechanics of the disk drive arm. The terms 
ls plus r in the denominator and km in the numerator are associated with the voice coil actuator. While it's not difficult to develop this transfer function, we won't do so at this time. But let me tell you what these parameters in G of S mean. J is the inertia of the arm and reed head. B is a friction coefficient associated with the bearings in the voice coil actuator. L is the inductance of the voice coil and R is its resistance. Km is the voice coil torque constant. It has units of newton meters per volt. So now we'll simplify our plant transfer function. First let's note that G of S is a third order system. It has three poles. With little algebra we can write the denominator in terms of time constants. We'll divide both the numerator and denominator by B and R. And that will then put the transfer function in the following form. And the numerator will have Km over BR. And the denominator will have S times tau sub LS plus 1 times tau S plus 1, where tau sub L and tau are time constants associated with these dynamics. Tau sub L will be J over B, and this is a mechanical time constant associated with the inertia and friction of the arm. With some typical numbers, this is 0.05 seconds. Tau is an electrical time constant associated with the voice coil. It's the inductance of the voice coil divided by its resistance. And with typical numbers, we find this to be 0.001 second. Now, you'll note that the electrical time constant is much smaller than the mechanical time constant. What that means is the electrical dynamics are occurring much faster than the mechanical dynamics. So, with this knowledge, we'll make an approximation. We'll say the electrical dynamics are so fast that we can essentially ignore them. And then we'll treat our plant as if it's just the mechanical dynamics. Now, if you found the arguments I just made about approximating a higher order system by a lower order system somewhat confusing, you should not worry. We'll actually cover this in much greater detail later in the class. If we ignore the electrical dynamics because they're so fast, then our transfer function can be approximated as G of S equals Km over Br divided by S times tau L S plus 1. Using some typical numbers, we find this transfer function to simplify to 5 over S times S plus 20. Now that we have the plant transfer function, we're ready to design the controller. And this will be covered in our next presentation where we start to use a proportional controller for the control of this plant.